Hey everyone out there, welcome to the Comic Book Girl 19 Plomp... Plomp cast. Okay, now I'm getting drunk. (laughs) Everybody, hello everybody, welcome to the Comic Book Girl 19 Plomp cast number five. We got a lot of stuff to talk about today, so let's get right into it. So let's start with introductions. Uh, Comic Book Girl 19, that's me, I'm here. Just Kirk. And I guess I'm going by T-Bone today. T-Bone. T-Bone in the house. So T-Bone, what are we going to be talking about today? All right, today we got a variety of topics that are going to be very interesting. You're going to talk about the Game of Thrones Red Wedding. Red Dun, Wedding. Dun, dun, dun. Which everyone has been demanding that you speak of. It'll happen. Then we're going to move on to comics. We're going to talk about the X-Men topics. Uh, we've got X-Men number one, all new X-Men number 12, Wolverine and the X-Men number 30. We're going to move on to The Wake number one. We're going to talk about Iron Man, the secret origin of Tony Stark, with a whole Ooh. new arc happening. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about Daredevil, End of Days. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about uh, the fact that you're quitting Screen Addict. What? Why? Oh, wait, wait, wait. You forgot the green team. Oh, we're going to talk <laughs> Everyone about... Everyone forgot the green team. Yeah, green we're gonna, team. We're going to talk about that. Yeah. We're going to talk about Astro City number one for just a second. Okay, we added those in. We're, yeah. Then we're going to talk about movies. We're going to talk about... After Earth, a new M. Night Shyamalan flop. (laughs) (laughs) Then we're going to talk about, uh, I guess, Man of Steel, which is coming out on Friday. I think, yeah, I believe so, yes. Is that tomorrow? Comes out tomorrow? No, next week. No, no, next Next week. Okay, Man of Steel. We need to get tickets for that. All right. We've got to talk about it, though. Yeah, and uh, then we're going to do Twitter Twitter questions, Facebook questions. Right, so send in your Twitter questions now. (laughs) I still like pretending this is live. (laughs) Uh... All right. right. Whatever. All right. So let's let's start off with uh, Wolverine and the X Men. We're we doing. Are we doing comics or doing Game oh, of no, Thrones? Oh no! Fuck. Never mind. Let's yeah. Start fuck over. the X Men right now. Game okay. Of let's let's get let's, down to the nitty gritty. Sorry. Let's talk about the real stuff. Let's start out by talking about Game of Thrones. We got to talk about the Red <sighs> Wedding. There's been a lot of questions from everyone on all sides about it. And I will say that I am uh, I'm I'm good with it. I think it's I thought it was well done. It was different from the book, but that's okay. Uh, it was I'm like my heart was literally pounding because I knew it was coming, and I was like, oh god. And I was trying not to give it away for like T Bone because he you know he didn't know, so I was just like. Uh, You've actually been trying to keep him off of the YouTube threads. Yeah, after, just so that nothing gets spoiled for him. Yeah, we've been so busy lately that we uh we had a couple of episodes that we hadn't seen yet and uh we weren't caught up. And so when uh, episode 9 hit and everyone was like blah red wedding, I was like Tyson, do not go on the comments. Do not look at any do not go on the internet period. In just fact. stay off the internet. Um so any work you have to do so yeah, no. so we uh so yeah, he was he was surprised. He knew that Rob was going to get killed, but he didn't know how. So, okay. yeah. It was. What did you feel about it? How did you feel? Not knowing that it was coming, Tyson, how did you feel about it? I think I was effectively shocked. <laughs> uh, I felt bad. I felt terrible. Um, <laughs> I was sad. I was actually sad. Yeah. I think that a lot of people felt that way. Yeah. They just really wanted trauma. They wanted to just, like, yeah, deliver as much trauma brutal. as possible. It was really brutal. Like, Here's... Talisa getting stabbed in the stomach, See, that's the part shanked I wanted, in the newborn. That's what I wanted to talk about, because that's not in the book. Mm-mm. And the fact that HBO was like... Wow, we need to be as true to the book as possible. By the way, is it possible we could take it a little bit further? Right, right. Because in the book, and I believe Jane Westernlean, because there's no Talisa anything. Right. She's captured, and they're just kind of holding her because she does have the heir to and, the north. And that's kind of like their trump card. Right, right. I th- if, I, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, but yeah, the Talisa thing was gnarly. Man, yeah, that's... Okay, so I will say that I did get spoiled because we... I do edit the Game of Thrones videos we make. And when I read the comments, people can't help but spoil things in the comments. I know. And that's, which is and really it's, disappointing. It's so I was ruined that I knew Rob Stark was going to die. Okay? Yeah. Someone just blurted that out and ruined it for everyone. <laughs> I could, it was probably all in caps, too. And like I completely know, like I Misspelled. Like, he dies! <sighs> like, oh! Yeah. So I, I knew he was going to die, but I had no idea that... Catelyn was going to die. Mm-hmm. That was the most shocking to me, watching it. Seeing her in that last shot when I she's just like... I love it when, like, I, when, when she uh, fucking flirt. slits that girl's throat, too. And, like, and that yell, that, that horrible yell oh, that she, like... Oh, she is God, that was fucking just, amazing. And not to, make, not to make a pun, but how smart was it for HBO to go right into the credits and, and like I said, no joke, but for it to be stark. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, no, music. Yeah, there was no, music. no music or anything. No, and, like, that's something that they did really well. I really appreciate they did that. And I would say earlier, when they cut off Jamie's hand, and they cut to that weird fucking 
Bear and the Maiden Fair song oh, they did, yeah. like that rock and roll modern. Tra- I was like, yeah. what? That's not a funny moment. Like that's not like that's a fucking crazy thing. Like the Red Wedding. You know, it's right. not as gnarly as that. But well, speaking of songs, they played the the Reigns of Castamir. Oh, that was cool. Right yeah. before it yeah, all when happened. Catelyn, that, that's what tipped her off. Yeah. Oh, that's it's, yeah, right. She's, they were playing now the Reigns of Castamir, so it's like Tywin's like that's telling you. That Tywin set this motherfucker up. Mm-hmm. Like, he did all this. They don't really go into that in the show, but you see him earlier, and he's he's doing all these letters, and he's like, I'm trying to get Jamie back, and I'm trying to do this, and I'm trying to do this. Right. And that's what those letters were. I mean, also, really tasty little shout-out for, uh, if you weren't catching on to what was going on right away, but when she leans over and checks the sleeve, and, Bolton, yeah. and there's all the chain yeah. mail... Uh, and you know, and like, the, and the, like that like, was for everyone else to go. Oh crap! Yeah, Why that was is he wearing chain mail? so gnarly. That was so gnarly. Fucking Boltons, man. You can't trust those assholes as far as you can throw them. I'm just saying. But uh, but yeah. Oh, and, and then the stab and the the Lannister send your regards. Oh my like, god! Oh. Yeah, that was good. And but I do feel like I wish that there wasn't yeah. a digital throat slit. I, I was that digital. I hope that I'm calling that I right. But all through the tears. Eh, it was fine. It, it was fine. Uh, I want some real. It was fine. But Don't be nitpicky. Talk uh, about just the story here. But it was it was good though. I wasn't it was disappointed. Like effective I said, what happened? I, and then the part with Arya where she gets there, and then she's so close, and then she sees what's going down. She sees like mm. uh, mm-hmm. Grey Wind. Is that his name? I believe that's his name. Right. Grey Wind get get killed, and it's just like. This fucking girl cannot catch a break, you know? I mean, she's just so fucking tough. Like, I don't know. I love it. I love her. She's fantastic. Man. So it, I came it, you up, know, I, don't, oh. I can't imagine that you would want to watch that again. Yeah. You know? Yeah. T- it's going to yeah. be tough when we have to yeah, watch it Yeah, T-Bone. Well, this is what we normally oh. do is we, uh, you know, we, we'll save up an episode or two generally. Right. And then we'll watch the last episode that we saw before we watch the new we'll one. Get caught up. You know, and then... get caught up. But it's like, T-Bone was like, I don't even want to watch that again. No, I, like, I I came up with a really great drinking game for you guys for the next time you decide to watch Game of Thrones. Yeah, after the episode, you just keep drinking until it doesn't <laughs> hurt anymore. <laughs> like, I like that. You, you just drink until the pain's gone. Yeah, and that's my my new Game of Thrones drinking game. Yeah, red red wedding. It happened. <laughs> it was gnarly. Uh, I did Again, my I Kat- did my best to protect. Did you guys not feel like Catelyn dying was the most brutal part of? No, the it was, was horrible. No, it was gnarly. Especially just, because like you expect started... her character to be there the whole time. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and then there's yeah. just that moment where she's screaming that guttural scream, yeah, yeah, and then wait yeah. in case it wasn't bad enough, and then this guy just like. Enters stage white, yeah, yeah. slits her throat, and leaves again. Ooh. Like, oh, by the way, slice. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh. No, I just, I, I really, I really do love that part where she slit the fucking. Uh, that part was awesome. Hoster, or not Hoster, um, whatever his name is, fucking Frey asshole. But the, the, the dick. Oh my god, that was so great when he just like, I'll kill her wife, and he's like, I don't give a shit, and I'll, she's like, Well, I'm gonna I'll kill another, her anyway. Yeah, I'll like, get her. Fuck I'll you, get another one. You know? Like, ugh, that was so good. That's so good. I do okay, I do oh, wanna I do wanna say something that's unrelated well, kind of related to this. Okay. So Game of Thrones has made what medieval times popular, I guess. Well fantasy, yeah. Yeah. Well, no. They're starting a Vikings show now. I think they're gonna start It's on History Channel. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but my- but uh, my feeling is that producers, you know, wanna see it, they always do things that are, they think are trends. Right. Right. And they're like, Oh, uh, they like medieval times now, let's make other medieval shows. Well, I think it's interesting that both sci fi and fantasy are really big right now. Like that's like sci-fi. I know, but any, too. anytime anything gets too popular, you know, yeah. somebody but takes it too far and starts yeah, doing knockoffs forget, of everything. We saw this already happen once before at the late seventies and early eighties. Mm-hmm. That's I mean, everyone. Don't. I'm not speaking ill. I love my Star Wars. Yeah. But Star Wars came out of that entire fantasy sci-fi genre that yeah. was becoming Conan, Beastmaster. Crawl. Yes, crawl. Like all those yeah. movies yes. were born out yeah. of that sci fi fantasy, like Frank Franzetta, yeah. like, you know, Backscape. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I mean, maybe we're going to see some of that again, but now that we've got the technology. Like, and, all the genre fiction right you know. now seems to be like blowing up, though. Like a lot of genre fiction, right. except for horror. Horror is the only one that is not blown up right now. There is not a fucking good horror movie out there. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm wrong. I, I haven't seen one in a while. I liked Insidious a little bit. But I, I liked Insidious. I liked Insidious, but it was. I mean, it was good. I liked yeah, Insidious, I liked but Insidious I was, it wasn't it like life changing though. It wasn't like thousand dollars. That's why yeah, I liked it. Yeah, it's like, but know. it wasn't like I have to go buy the DVD. You right. know, it was, it was like, I don't know. It's I'm kind of starved for some horror, but you know, a but good I'm one. but I'm glad to see fantasy doing good for the first time. You know, absolutely. I mean, okay, since so that least. was us talking okay. about trends. <laughs> <laughs> and, and almost crying talking about <laughs> the lead writing. Um, oh okay, so... Let's move on to comics and start X-Men. talking about the X-Men. Back to Wolverine and the X-Men. A whole lot of X-Men. 
back to Wolverine and the X-Men. Uh, first thing I have to say, it's official. I really fucking don't like this beast design. Like, I didn't like it to begin with, and I still they don't like it. They changed beast's design again? They did. Again. He was Kitty Beast ever since New X-Men, I believe. Grant Morrison turned him into Kitty Beast. Yeah. Which, Grant Morrison loves cats. I love cats. Everyone, everyone, everyone on the internet cat. loves cats. Whoa, whoa, what did he look like at, to begin with? First of all, he was human. Well, yeah, yeah. first he was human. Okay, thing. okay, so yeah. when he started out, he was human. He had big hands, big feet, you know, kind of, you know, like acrobatic with weird feet things going on. Right. And then he transitioned into the blue. Into blue furry. Blue furry. He was just a big, cuddly blue you know? furry And thing. then the 90s kind of took that up to like a very stylized blue furry. Right. You know? And then from there we went to... Regal feline look. Kitty beast, yeah. yeah. And then now we're at Sasquatch beast. Which, by the way, does beast really need to be revamped? Like, is like, he really a character? Like, well, what the fuck are we going to do with beast like, now? I, you like, know? Yeah. I don't mind them changing him as long as they stick to it for at least a year. Well, Something, I mean, anything. Kitty, I mean, Kitty beast has been around for a while. And, you know, a lot of people had problems drawing him. For some reason, um, but this new beast—it seems like nobody knows how to draw him. Like every time I see him, every he looks different. Every artist seems like, to have a different variation on him. Yeah, because yeah, no, it's, it's a really weird design. It's completely unnecessary. Nobody asked for Kitty Beast to be changed. In my well, opinion, you know, I so noticed that in the uh, the AVX, is everyone was drawing Cyclops' new mask that he had differently. Oh, different, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I think they just all happened so fast. No one knew what well, it really looked like. I mean, this cover totally makes him look like a giant blue gorilla. Right. It's right. kind of weird. Yeah, and then on the interior art, though, there's a shot of him where he looks very Hellboy. He looks very Mignola. Saw that. Uh, I liked it, though. I wasn't, I'm not against it, but uh, where he's in the sword headquarters, he looked really good. But Right. So Wolverine the X-Men looks like okay, we're so starting to get back on track. Yeah, I was going to say, like, let's, let's give it some positives, because like, okay. aside from the fact that Beast's new redesign sucks... It's not their fault. It's still such a great series. Yeah, the Hellfire Saga uh, prologue, this is what this one is. It's the beginning. They've been setting this up for a while with these little Hellfire Club. They killed all the old ones. They're these like, little rich assholes. Uh, I'm going to kill another fly oh, pretty awesome. soon. And, um, <laughs> you snatched two flies out of the air by now. Yeah, yeah well, she's three, got her, she's actually. Got her Mr. You Miyagi missed one right now. You, you yeah. missed one in the bathroom. I got one of those Why, guys. Well, where did all these flies come from? I don't know. Don't know. Our doors are open because it's nice weather now. So they're like coming in. But, anyways, so they've been setting up this Hellfire thing for a while. There's these little rich assholes. There's a little Dr. Frankenstein. There's a new little sadistic white queen little girl who likes to kill people. There's yeah. Kilgore Kincaid or some shit. And then there's another one. I don't know. Uh, I well, I'm not going to say that, but yeah, but they are awesome. Like yeah. as far as like the baddies, because I didn't think like a, a Hellfire Club completely consisting of you know prepubescent yeah. geniuses was going to be a, a, a good enemy, right? But it works for but, Wolverine and the X Men. Yeah, and they they shot Brew in the head. Oh, they were trying yeah. to manipulate ID with a robotic priest. As weird as it sounds, it was actually a good storyline. <laughs> um, and this whole thing is about, uh, you know, Beast trying to figure out how to get Brew's consciousness back. and What made him brew. Yeah, what made him brew, and that's not going too well. And then uh, Kid Omega is hot on the trail of ID of what happened with ID and, like, why she left for the Hellfire Club Academy. Because they have their own school now. Right. I guess we forgot to leave, put that, or put that in there. Um but you find out that ID is going to the Hellfire Club Academy to find who shot Brew to kill them. But now Kid yeah. Omega is following her. Right. But everyone over in the uh, Jean Grey school is like, oh, oh so you're... Kid Omega's up to no good again. Yeah, I know. And he's going to just join the Hellfire Club, you Which know? actually would be a really great storyline. But... Right. And then he goes through Toad, though. He hooks up with Toad, who's, go right. who's going over there for reels because Husk is over there. And that has just been a weird, like I the whole thing with Husk. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. And her powers failing. I don't know what's going on. And I with keep that. want to scream. I keep want to keep screaming like, "Oh no, it's just Mystique." You watch and see. But Mystique right. is That's what such I keep a thinking too. But she's off on her own fucking bullshit. Yeah, she's doing yeah. her thing in um, all uh, new X Men. Yeah, all new X Men. Yeah. So I know that they're not touching on that character. So I don't know what's going on with that. But you know, I hope that they figure it out for Brew. I'll say that. No, I'm he was your. You were emotionally I was, distraught. I was. I cried when in the bathroom. He took a bullet to the head. I cried in the bathroom. You know, it was like the worst thing that's ever <laughs> happened. Uh, so I hope we figure it out. Um, but yeah, Wolverine the X Men's been doing good. No, I'm uh, just glad they're back on that storyline. I know. I'm glad really that we cool. have a storyline. Um, X Men, the new X oh, Brian yes. Wood X Men, uh, the all female team consisting of Storm, Rogue, Rachel Gray. Kitty Pride, Jubilee, and Psylocke, I believe. 
taking place at the Jean Grey School for Higher Learning. I think that's another kind of a reason backdrop. why I like it because I like the fact that it's happening over at the Jean Grey School. Yeah, so we're we gonna get, get more that. Of that. Mm-hmm. Um, Brian Wood writing it. Yeah, who pretty much is like amazing in whatever he touches. I know he's also doing the Star Wars comic, which mm-hmm. I keep raving about. Uh, Brian Wood can bounce around. He he did the Conan series for Dark Horse. Yeah. That was also really good, more true to the books. But uh, he, Brian Wood also did an X-Men uh, three or four issue thing last year into this year on another title. And mm-hmm. I think they were just kind of trying him out to see like if his voice worked for X-Men. Right. And it really did. Like He really did nail Storm and Psylocke yeah. and their relationship. Um, and I, so I'm glad they're, they're yeah. putting him on another title. No, it's – and the artist uh, that uh, – I don't know if it's Oliver or Olivier. Right. Quapel or Qu- I'm sure I, I'm saying it wrong, but I love his art style. I love how he draws women. I love how he draws their faces. Uh, I'm really into it. Yeah, it's an it's an and all it's like, and, and female the, femme fatale you know, X Men squad. And That's the thing is, cool. is like you have the muscle, like you have Rogue, who's the muscle, right? You know, um, you have Storm, the leader. You have you know Kitty Pride, your backup. You know, mm-hmm. Intel person. You got Rachel Gray, your your psychic. You got your psych. And then you got your ninja. Stealth mode, Psylocke, and then you have Jubilee, you know. Right. She does her thing, but, uh, whatever. <laughs> she bounces around. She's not got as cool lights. as Dazzler. I don't care not what you say. Um, but, I, th- I mean, like, why would they need a man? Like, they don't, they got it all. Like, they are you, do they not need a man? Like, I mean, not that they don't need a man, but right. it's like, okay. you know, they, they're doing all right. They can handle <laughs> it. You know, they got all their bases covered, you know. <laughs> Although they do refer to Beast. Beast is, they're like, Somewhere oh, Hank, yeah, you know, like Hank's in the back doing his work. Also, on the ship. not at all looking like what we expect him to look like <laughs> God, after the revamp. Jeez, it's always, it's always different now. But, uh, I really enjoyed the storyline setup where there's like the the two bacteria and there's oh, the it's sister a, and the brother and the yeah. What, it's a pretty amazing premise that they set up. Mm-hmm, then mm-hmm. that's all you really need to know. Like in the first issue that, that they're giving us this, they're billion year old twins. Yeah. That started off as like bacteria. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know it sounds stupid the way I'm describing it, but that's <laughs> the honest to god. Like that's what they're writing in the series, and it's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, no, and I, you know, and I will say this too. Uh, like, I love the way that this, this guy uh, draws, like, Storm has this really cute outfit on, and it's, like, really relevant and up-to-date with all these little triangles and little, like, patterns on it. That's totally, like, what's at fashion stores right now. So, good for you for, like... Whoever's paying attention I'm to that. I'm just saying, like, that's the whole thing. Um, no, it's good. And Rogue is actually fun for a minute, you know? I mean, it's like, she's, like, stopping the train and doing, you know, she has her moment in the sun. And, right. I'd like to see somebody do something awesome with Rogue, for sure. So, I think Rogue definitely has one of those problems where she's too powerful. Yeah. So, it's hard to, to write a character like that. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like, you know. yeah, hey, I get it. But I want to see some good stuff out of her. But I'm excited about it. It's looking really good. Uh, totally. Definitely pick it up. It's number one. So, I mean, it's like... Start now. Start now. Now, something else that is just the best X title, one of the best X titles. I think I would say it's it's the most solid by by far. What's that? All new X Men. Uh, we're talking about issue number twelve. Meet the Uncanny Avengers, and oh my God, there's heart wrenching, fucking touching moment it's between heart wrenching Havoc and young Cyclops from the past, and like it's so cute. And then Jean Grey has a thing with Scarlet Witch that's really fucking cool. Ugh. They're basically, what happens in this title because uh, Mystique and her little squad have impersonated the uh, original X-Men that came back from the past. Yeah. And they're impersonating them while pulling off, like, these amazingly huge multi-million dollar bank heists. Yeah. So now all of a sudden we get a visit from the Uncanny Avengers, which is Havoc's right. squad of Avengers. Right. To come check up and go, well, what's the deal? Are you guys really pulling these, you know, crimes? Obviously not. Right. But now comes the moment when it's older Havoc meeting younger brother scott from the past Mm -hmm. and scott from the past had no idea his brother was still like alive alive or what had happened to him like he has no frame of reference yet yeah so it's this really weird like scott realizing his brother's gonna be okay yeah like and like becomes an avenger and is really stoked Mm -hmm. and kind of starstruck on that yeah and it's like and I love the part where Captain America is like, we talked about this, Summers. You can play catch up later. There's and too much like, at stake. Up, and everyone tells him to shut up. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's like, let like, him have a moment with his fucking past 
alternate timeline younger or older brother who's younger at right. this point. Like, and and now the now the younger brother is the older brother technically. I know, and it's really cool. And like the scene where they hug at the oh. very end, and like he's and then Captain America says to him when they're flying away, says to Havoc, um, "That was nice, all things considered. You got to see your brother at his best." Right. And like that he's like, yeah. like, and I was the... like. Oh, Oh my god, like it's so sweet. Like I loved it. I, and I loved when Jean Grey read Wanda and knew that she was the deal, you know, she was the reason M Day happened when all the mutants were destroyed through her hex powers when she went crazy and she's like she destroyed everything we worked Which, for. No now, don't get me wrong, like it seems to be Jean Grey's thing in the series to keep flipping out when she's not supposed to. Right. That's like right. her thing right she, now. Yeah, she's she's unchecked. But I love the fact that the M Day storyline and that continuity, because Marvel rules at car- continuity. Yeah, it's still an issue. Right. It's, it isn't yeah, just a summer blockbuster is, that happened right. a few years ago and now it's done and over with. Mm-hmm. Like, there's still the ramifications of like, yes. what the hell is she doing on the team? Yeah, like, like what the she hell is she doing here? Ruined everything that we worked for. We were almost there. Right. We were on the cusp. And now we got to start from fucking scratch because of this bitch, and she's a fucking Avenger. It's, like, I, that was amazing. Which is cool. Like Scott going, like, oh my god, my brother totally deserves to be an Avenger. Right. But then Jean's like, this bitch. Uh, yeah. No. There what was, the hell are they doing on the same team? Man, like, all new oh, X Men. Did I tell you what happened at the comic shop the other day when I was picking this thing up? No. This guy told me that he didn't like it because it was too wordy. <sighs> what? But he he didn't like the title because what? there's not enough action. God damn it. It's like, it's he, like there's not I, enough action in X Men titles. And I quote that it is too story heavy. I don't like it when I have to read words. Oh, man. I want them to punch. Like, I fuck just, you. That's not what the X Men is about. Like, if you want to go see people punching, go somewhere else because the X Men is too always. Story. Yeah, it, it was, it was yeah. too story. Well, it's it, like, dude, too many words in story, and I couldn't brain, dude. The X Men has always it. been about the relationships. It's, it's stupid. It's so stupid. I love that title. Ugh. Oh, yeah. And I said it before, and I'll say it again. I did not expect Bendis to grasp the X Men universe as well as he has. Man, dude, yeah. the guy X Men's on fire right now. Yeah, thank X-Men's you. X Men's on fire right it. now, and I'm glad to be a part of it. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad the, to be here right for now. It. Right now, every title is amazing. Because there's been times Except, where they well, have not, not every been title, on fire. But, well, not every title, but my, my beloved X Factor is going to get canceled soon, oh. and it's just the, he's it's running out of limbo. ideas. Yeah, it's in limbo. Peter David did an amazing run on that thing, but in the last. I don't know, maybe six to twelve issues. Yeah, he's. I don't know what he's doing with it anymore. Right. And I love those characters, but I know. Oh. Um. So let's move on to the wake. Wake. Scott Snyder, Sean Murphy teaming up for this awesome fucking fish monster adventure. <laughs> oh, okay. So fish you, monster. <laughs> it is a fish monster. There and is it's a an fish awesome, monster. scary fish monster. And it's very, it's very like reminds me of like things like. You know, aliens. Wait, wait, wait. And lo- tell me, what is the wake about? Okay, the know. wake okay. is. It's new. A lot of people don't it's know. It's the first issue off of, and thank God I'm about to say these words, off the Vertigo imprint. Yeah, on Vertigo. DC. We'll more into that later. Yes, we will. It's written by Scott Snyder, who has been knocking out of the park with his Batman run. Uh-huh. And then it's art, I think the art, and maybe also the story, I need to go back and look at it. It's by this guy named Sean Murphy, who I just discovered, we just discovered. Yeah. Punk Rock Jesus. Punk Rock Jesus when he came out with that little mini series. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And even though the ending was a little on the weak side. Right. It wasn't it wasn't the, fulfilling. <laughs> it wasn't fulfilling. But the series was amazing. But and the, the art. Uh, the art though. I mean, like oh. I even even if it's the shittiest story in the world, that art. I mean, like, I will buy it. That art is so good. And I am so glad that we have another fix. We got our Sean Murphy. I told fix. you, I got nine more months of these issues coming out. I'm excited I'm about so, it. And I'm this, just gonna drool over this art. I mean, and it it starts okay. So there's a, a deal in the future where there's like the quest, and it, you know, apparently looks like the ocean is taken over. Fish monster has like you there's know, there's an awesome there's dolphin. Some, I don't know who, who doesn't love dolphins. Shit. Then it goes back in time, and then you know you have the scientist lady, and she goes down into this. You know, illegal secret illegal secret oil rig yeah under station. That's, that's on the ground of the of the sea floor right uh, and they've captured something and they have all these different pe- a team assembled to figure out what this thing is and it's a fish monster and it's really a thing <laughs> yeah it's a thing and by the way it's not nice or pleasant or happy because no, it we first get introduced to it because it's taken out three dudes at the room to the infirmary right right like Ugh. right off the bat you yeah. know so 
I, you know, again, I, you know, I was talking about, I love horror stuff. This has a lot of cool horror elements. It has amazing art. I love Scott Snyder's stories. S- Snyder this is, is really thing good I'm the at most... writing the creepy too. Yeah. Like I'm... his American oh, Vampire yeah. runs awesome. Oh, yeah. I and mean... then he's had some of the best scare moments in Batman. I'm the most excited about The Wake right now. Yeah. I think that's the thing that I'm like most, most excited about. And I had about. no idea about it. It was I a didn't either. nice, awesome surprise. I didn't either. I just saw it at the store and I was just like, oh, fuck, Mer- Sean Murphy, and, Scott Snyder. Yeah, uh, and here's the funny I part. It. I only saw Snyder Murphy. I'm like, that's not the same Scott Snyder. That's not the same Sean uh, Murphy. Yeah. And like, I got two wishes in one when I opened up the cover. Right. Like, all right, I got this. All right, this. I got to buy this. Yeah. So, yeah, number one, the number one just came out, so definitely go pick that up if you're trying to get in a month. Yeah, and like I said, now. there's no real hype behind it yet, so you'll be able to go get the original uh, pressing. Yeah. It's still in the shops right now. Yeah, and it's amazing. Um, so moving on. Okay. Let's get into the secret origin of Tony Stark. The new Iron Man uh, starts Aww. issue nine. We're up to issue 11 I right now. I think T-Bone might have a thing to yeah. say about this. What you, I have not read it, T-Bone. Well, okay, so I started reading the Iron Man comics. Right. Since Marvel now started. And I, I took your advice. Being a comic book noobler, if you don't know, <laughs> that's me. I'm a comic book noobler. Uh-huh. And I just picked a topic that I thought I might try. Yeah. And uh, it, it wasn't so good up until now, and now it got really good. Right. With this right. new arc that's starting, The Secret Origin of Tony Stark. Um, and everything everything led up to this. So what's going on is there's this new character called 451. I think that's what we're calling is 451. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's claiming that, uh, well, basically we're finding out that everything that Tony Stark thought he knew about his past might be different, and this could all affect all of the continuity that we have yeah, known it, before. It, it could potentially be a big continuity changer for, yeah. for Iron Man. And the cool thing is not changing it so that it's a revamp or a reboot. Right, it's a secret origin. But it definitely yeah. puts a new light and a new spin on what we've known about Tony. Yeah, and I guess without spoiling it, because we want you to read it, and it's yeah, just really starting do. now. Um is that basically we're finding out that uh, some things happened in Tony's past that Pre-past. may, have, that may yeah. explain why is he so smart? Right. Like, yeah. how is he the smartest engineer why, in the world? And I like the fact you used the word engineer. Why is he the one that, with the Reed, Reed Richards yeah. right. and the Doctor Dooms and the other super geniuses of this world, that he is compelled to create and build? Yeah. He's a builder. Is, he's a builder. He's a builder. You know, and Reed Richards is definitely a yeah, thinker. Reed, Reed, yeah, Reed Richards is a thinker. Mm-hmm. Tony Stark's a builder. Right. Yeah. And this gets really behind, like, why he's just compelled to do it. That's awesome. And so, I'm really stoked that T-Bone got into this because... Yeah, on the last page of yeah. uh, issue number... What is it? What's the, the first one? Right there. Nine? Go. Issue number nine. No, it, no, no. I was laughing at, at oh. the twist at the end. I was like, oh, oh really? Uh, yeah. When, oh, that's right. That's and I don't right. want to spoil, but there's a good twist in there. That's funny. Yeah. So if you're a big fan of the movies... You'll really like what they did in the back of this issue. Yeah, it's very un- yeah, it's very yeah. good for any readers. Oh yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, that's the thing about it. Anyone that uh, can can jump right into this because you've seen the movies, you're gonna like it. And like I said, I'm excited that Tebow got into this because I thought that this idea, this concept that they threw out with the new secret origin, I don't want to spoil it. Right. But I thought it would actually scare away comic book noobers. Yeah. Like, ah, uh, now I have to learn all about all and, of and, and, this stuff. But yeah. apparently not. And I yeah, think that's, that's awesome. Good. That's good. And I like that. I like that you have had to deal with reading a comic for a while, and then sometimes for it some just reason I kept re- I kept reading it when it's not good. And you know what? I, yeah. I've realized is like that's what's fun about comic books is that most of them aren't very good. <laughs> <laughs> But when you find one that is good, it's like so it's rewarding. It. And dude, you're like, I'm the only one that knows about yeah, this. You do know that we're doing a comic book podcast, right? <laughs> I know. Yeah. That's but awesome, I mean, though. But I'm so it's, excited. It's kind of true, you know? And it's, it's, but it's like, also, that's, that's what I had to do with uh, fucking Swamp Thing and Animal Man, where I just stuck with it, and I didn't even know why I was doing it, and I was just hoping it was going to get better, and then it didn't. And, you know, and sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And that's that's right. kind of well, what's I guess fun I, about I comics. Had a, right. I, I had a curiosity of where this all was going, and I stuck with it. Yeah, um, good. And I also want to say that the art has gotten really good. Oh yeah, oh, they changed it up yeah. from Greg Pak from e- the first Eagle few issues. Sham, yeah. yeah, Dale believe... Eaglesham. Yeah, if we're pronouncing yeah. it right. Yeah, good, good update. His, his art is really good, and particularly what I like about it is the way he does his panels. Is that he breaks it up and he does all this like little digital stuff on the sides of the panels that uh, is completely superfluous, yeah. but very nice design work. Works though. for uh, you know Tony Stark. I mean, to put that sort of extra flourish on panels, you yeah. know, I mean, it's a... like he's not getting paid extra no, for that. But, uh, you no. know, he's just doing because he loves no, it. No, but it's so creative and uh, and I fun. like that Marvel titles do that. Yeah, I don't see a whole lot of other plate. Well, I mean, I do see like some of the smaller independent. Publishers taking risks like Image right. and guys like that, where like they try to do really cool panel layouts. Yeah. But to see one of the big two going like, "Hey, it'd be really cool if someone had a great idea or concept, 
like going back to dupe. Right. And right. The the gutters when in the gutters and the and that one issue we talked about. Yeah. This. And especially like the layout that they've been doing for Young Avengers. Mm-hmm. Like I like that. Yeah. No, they're really yeah. pushing it, and that's good because they need to push it. Like they have I mean, to. they don't. You don't need to go crazy and like be an asshole about it. But but it was just a little thing that worked. Yeah. Like just like try new things though. Um, but. Yeah. So, Kirk, I know that you wanted to talk about Daredevil End of Days. End of Days. I just really want to touch on it because um, I know last week we talked about Daredevil, the uh, current Mark Wade run, mm-hmm. and it has been consistently awesome. But going back to Bendis, he kind of brought back Daredevil in a really major and big way when he took over the character for a few years. Yeah. And this, I mean, the art was great. The story was amazing. It was definitely a long play as far as where the, there was a beginning, middle, and end. And it really took Matt to different places. And he really did apply a lot of the stuff that he was doing with Alias and some of those other titles yeah. to a mainstream Marvel title. I really liked End of Days because it, one, shows the death of Matt Murdock. It happens in, a little bit in the future. Yeah. yeah. And it shows who else picks up the mantle. Mm-hmm. Kind of really solidifies that whole storyline. Yeah. But the, the really fun part is watching all of Bendis' old Daredevil collaborators come back to work on this has been yeah. a lot of fun like yeah. i really miss david mack doing i know daredevil I, I, art. I'm and a... it just was a really great return to form yeah so if you're a big daredevil fan especially during bendis's run just a quick shout out go pick up the title it ends really well yeah i think i think it ends like not with a big yeah, bang yeah, but Kirk, more Kirk of a... was telling me how it ended because i haven't read it yeah. and you were telling me how it ended and i'm here to tell you it's yeah it's cool it's pretty cool it's like has all these really cool loose ends and it ties up right. in really fun ways and and I, you know, and I, going back to David Mack, like, I, I'm a fan of David Mack. Mack I was, you know, like, his Kabuki stuff and all that when I was growing up totally. was, was a big thing. Um, so, yeah. So, quick big shout out to Bendis and that whole Daredevil run. And this kind of yeah. comes back and revisits it. Go get that. Okay. So, we got to talk about a problem now. We have to talk about something that's not fun to talk about. Okay. Uh, there's this new title out, uh, DC's newest title. Which, let's talk about a title <laughs> that sucks. Uh, Just the, in concept alone. In concept alone. And I did read it. I did force myself to read it. Uh, the Green Team, Teen Trillionaires, number one, tagline on the front cover, more money, more problems. And who <laughs> is publishing this amazing little gem of the it's, title. It's like, DC, what are you thinking? <laughs> well, wait a minute. Okay, let's clarify. What's the problem we have? Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys have noticed, but uh, I think that super rich people are really unpopular right now. Yeah, not cool. Uh, and so they've decided to, especially, and you know what's even more annoying than super, super rich people? Teenage super, super rich people. <laughs> <laughs> so they've decided to put together a team of four or five super rich asshole teenagers, Justin Bieber's, and uh, they're going to form some sort of super team or some bullshit where they profit off of other people's, you know, okay. fucking inventions. So basically you know, what you're saying is play no, no superpowers. No superpowers, no. Are they, are they trying to invent superpowers? No, no, they're trying to buy other people's inventions because they can't do anything but buy stuff. I think you should just explain what's happening on this cover here. The cover oh, alone yeah. Talk is about the fantastic. Cover. Oh, this is crap. The cover alone, it's got them, they're driving in some fancy car. One of them's on the front. Uh, there's a girl who has a money dress on. Well, they're all flinging money. They're all stuff. flinging. They're all there's money the and pearls going everywhere. They have booze, even though they're supposed to be trillionaires or teenagers or something. I don't know. Teenagers. It looks like they could support a third of, One of them, the girl, has a cheetah kitten, which I think is pretty terrible on a lot of levels. That's Ugh. not That's not good. Uh, they got little money cups, little Starbucks money cups. And it's the worst what? thing I've ever seen in my life. And I read it, and it is the worst so thing I've ever read in my life. what happens in this first issue? Okay, so you have this. Okay, so you have this fucking uh, Egyptian prince. Okay. Uh, his dad's like, you know, saying you got to do this. You know, you're gonna take over that family, and if you fuck this up, whatever. He's being a dick to him. Okay. So the kid goes <laughs> to some 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 convention, this pop up invention convention, and then he's there. He meets up with some other teenage trillionaire kid who's got a posse of other teenage trillionaires that they hang out with and they talk about how much money they're gonna get when their fucking trust fund kicks in and it's really bizarre and at the end well, what's the purpose of it all? no no oh, oh that, it's, this, yeah, this is the, the best part though this is the best part at the end there's a villain that comes in because okay listen okay okay listen to this so the Egyptian guy first meets. I'm so these, excited about how shitty this is. I'm the, like, I'm on pins and needles right now. I know the Egyptian guy starts tweeting and Instagramming photos from the convention with the kids, the other kids that he just met for the first time. 
Uh, and so they're like, wait, you've been tweeting? Oh, my God. And, they get, and he's like, what's the problem? And then uh, apparently there's some middle, middle class supervillain that's going to trying to kill the trillionaire kid. So the middle class supervillain shows up. I'm making a face. You are making a face. Ugh. And uh, yeah, it's, it's fucking ridiculous. It's, oh, and there's this one part where the Egyptian guy's bodyguard, some big Egyptian guy, like uh-huh. it cracks, cracks the middle class guy, evil villain guy in the head. And the evil villain guy goes, not nice blindsiding the middle class. Is that how you rich dudes always do business and grabs them by the throat? Are you kidding me? The bad guy's middle class and the good guys are trillionaires. Like, are you whoa. kidding me? Yes. Whoa. I'm not. No. It's really awful. Wait, let me, can I see this for yeah, a second? You can I just want to let you guys I'm actually holding this in my hand. Someone greenlit this fucking and, idea. And I didn't buy it, by the way. This, Maybe they, in the end, the, uh, the green team realizes, oh, we're really the bad guys. I know, you know. I'm hoping that they they do become well, really the bad and guys. Think, and you got to keep reading this just to find. Teen <laughs> trillionaires, and here's the thing: I'm, I'm also looking as it. I'm looking at it. Um, it really does say rated T for teen because it's got the rating at the bottom. Well, if you think because about everyone it, I guess loves everything teenage on MTV trillionaires. in the last what over the last it decade has been about look at these rich kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sweet like sixteen. Them. Oh my god, I got a good story about sweet sweet sixteen. So the the sweet sixteen <laughs> girl and her dad were in a car, and she's being a bitch about the car that he's going to buy her for a sweet sixteen. <laughs> And uh, he's like, if you keep being a bitch about this, I'm going to buy you that car. And they both look over, and there's, like, a Mercury Cougar there, like a 96 Mercury Cougar, which is what I used to drive. Oh, man. (laughs) And then they both look at each other and start laughing. Like, they both know that will never happen. And I was just like, you fuckers. Like, that's the car I'm driving. Mercury Cougars actually used to be a really awesome muscle car, too. Yeah, I didn't get the muscle. I got the granny car. That's okay. Granny cars come with a convertible top. It had a V8. You're just an evil middle class that's not supporting the economy. I know. That's that's, that's well, me. <laughs> this, I, you gotta take that away from me. Yeah, take it away. Ugh. Yeah, so that's just one example of uh, of a what the fuck DC moment. Um, since and then, <laughs> uh, see, and I know we get... Uh, WTF I, DC. We get the finger pointed at us a lot because we really do kind of not... Sh- we don't hate DC, but we definitely There's don't show them any love. There's just nothing to fucking read, though. I mean, like, you I know. mean, Batman, we're on top of Scott Snyder's shit. I yeah, mean... Absolutely. Like, I'm still reading Grant Morrison's stuff. Oh, yeah. Maybe, my theory, maybe DC is run by baby boomers who want to uh, reinstate the 50s society. I mean, maybe. Maybe <laughs> rich people are good. They're good for the economy. Really rich people are... They help us out. They help us all. Uh, yeah, right. Fuck off. I mean, like, here's here's what I know what's going on in DC right now. Um, I now have three issues of Constantine that I have not read. Ugh. I don't know why. Um, I know that Catwoman got a bullet to the head this week. Yeah, what's that about? I don't know. I didn't bother with the issue, but Ugh. everyone online, I still haven't read a good thing from anybody else. In well, any it of just the seems like it's... she was just killed by some guy in a hallway, and who cares? Which, by the way, it's and... Catwoman. Show a little bit more respect. Show a little bit more respect. Like, she should, She's like, badass. I, I be... want to see a trap, but, like, Ugh. if the whole scene is like, oh, hey, what are you doing here? I'm Catwoman. Okay. Bang. That's pretty much it. I saw the thing. It's pretty much it. Um, so, yeah, that's weird. But then, but then you have the Vertigo side of things, which I'm so stoked about. And the Vertigo, who put out the Wake mm-hmm. that we just talked about, and they put out Astro City, uh, the number one, open the door. Yes. And I, you know, I personally haven't read the other Astro Cities. I should. I oh, haven't. I need that's, to. That's okay because it did take a long hiatus, and it's by uh, Rick Busaic, and it was awesome. Yeah. No, you don't have to. You do not have to have read any of the other Astro nope. Cities to understand this comic, so definitely uh, don't feel afraid to pick it up. But Astro City, I mean, I I was definitely that person who had to go back and rediscovered it. Yeah. Uh, probably about three or four years ago, I started picking up the trades. It is, It really is storytelling on the superhero caliber of the best. Yeah, yeah, like, that's what I've heard. I've heard nothing fun, but good things about and it. And I'm so excited that they brought back a lot of the original guys who were kind of uh, heading up the title. Yeah. Like, it's the original crew. And right. The, and I'm really excited that they're putting it on Vertigo because it's going to let them tell certain stories that they can't right. Right. in normal mainstream comics. Yeah, Vertigo is awesome. I love Vertigo. Know, I, it's if you it's want DC's me to talk imprint, posi- like indie imprint, yeah, essentially. If you want me to talk positive about DC, I will tell you that it really seems like they got Vertigo right. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, from what I'm seeing in what uh, is being uh, in the Diamond trades right now mm-hmm. and what they got coming up. Yeah. And that the fact that they are going to try to bring back a Sandman series in a little bit. Yeah. I like what Vertigo's doing. Right. And so I'll give you I'll give you that, DC. Yeah. I'll give you that. Yeah, you have that going on your side. And I will say reading Astro City number one, 
Uh, I love American Chibi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with American Chibi. She is... You want to read the part that's pretty funny? Yes. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta do that. Let me set it up while you okay. look for it. Okay, so American Chibi... In this world, she is chibi. She's drawn like as a chibi, which if right. you don't know, which is a Japanese super deformed, big head, little body, kind of like three heads high type situation. Right. Uh, and she she's a superhero in this world, but she looks like a chibi. Like she has the proportions of a chibi, and she's like wow, and punching people in the face, and just really ridiculous and over the top. Um, but. Later on, you're you're being guided by a, a narrative character, and, right? And, and he's I've... kind of talking about American Chibi and where her origins came from. <laughs> and she goes, um, "I'm not sure about her. She might just be enthusiastic, or she might be an idiot. I mean, where does she come from? Robot cartoon come to life. Thirteen year old anime fan who got her heart's desire, and this was it." Or worse, a 35-year-old anime fan who got his heart's desire. <laughs> and that's the weird part, because it's totally true. Totally true. Like, there is totally a guy, a weird 35-year-old anime fan out there. So if a genie and he rubbed a bottle and it came out, and he would say, I, I want to be chibi. I want to be a chibi girl superhero. There you go. I believe it. That was a really funny little insight. Um, um, also, really big and brave. I love it when they break down the fourth wall. The, the oh, narrative. Yeah. Talking to you, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Especially at the end when he's like, "Dude, whatever you don't read the next page. I really need you not to." Yeah. And obviously, we're gonna flip the page and read it. Yeah. He's like, "Ah, you ruined everything, didn't you?" Yeah, it's it's fun. Like I I, I really enjoyed it. Like I said, since not being uh, someone who's read the other ones, this one was fine. I had no problems reading it, and I just I, I can see that it's one of those things where if you have read it, there's all these Easter eggs and fun things for you. Right. But it's still good if you haven't read it. Right. So so go pick up Astro City. Really excited. So for Vertigo, that. good for you. Big yes. winners of the week. So T Bone. Oh, what do we got? What's up next? Are we gonna talk about movies now? Yeah, I think we should. I think it's movie time. Okay, let's uh, let's talk about After Earth. Oh my gosh. Okay. What are we so talking that, about? So, okay, so T- <laughs> After Earth is a movie that came out that I guess a lot of people aren't aware of. Yeah, Will Smith, I, Will and Jaden <laughs> Smith. You have to understand when they said we we're gonna talk about After Earth today, I was like, wait, that came out. I know. <laughs> I know. He was seriously no didn't know it had come out. Yeah, it came out this Friday. It's got Will Smith, Jaden Smith. His They're son. In a, in a, uh, his son in a sci-fi epic uh, directed by M. Night Shyamalan. Uh, and apparently Tyson which, really Which wanted... we talked about on our summer, summer movie preview episode. Yeah, yeah. And what did you say about it? I you don't... said it was M. Night Shyamalan's last chance. I was saying that I hope that this is good because I like M. Night Shyamalan. Not yes. because I like Will Smith or Jaden Smith. Oh, am I Smith. pronouncing his name wrong? Yes. Shyamalan. You say it wrong. He says Keon West or something. He says Kanye West Wong every single I time. I don't want to pronounce that right. Um, fair enough. <laughs> I, I applaud you. Anyway. But, uh, yeah, Tyson really wanted to go see it, and I was like, I don't know if I, I want to go see it. I want to see it because there, then... there's a lot of sci-fi movies coming out this summer, and I kind of want to weigh them all against each other at the yeah. end and see how they go, because some of these are just trends. It has a 12% on Rotten Tomatoes. Okay. I mean, not that I base everything off of Rotten Tomatoes, but a 12% is pretty fucking bad. Well, when bad. something gets a 12%, uh, you generally can, you can agree with it that it's Generally, bad. it's pretty terrible. Yeah. yeah. Um, Do we I'm, know anything about this film other than... Uh, I just. I mean, I just like I said. I just found out it came out. You mean as far as the yeah. plot? Uh, yeah. Uh, no, we don't know what the plot is. No. <laughs> well, that's like they they crash on Earth. Earth, and Earth is like a terrible place now, and everyone's left Earth, and like the Will Smith is hurt, and his son has to go out and okay do something. We don't know if there's the, apparently there's all a lot of jungle adventure. We don't know if there's a twist. Right. In I was the gonna end, say, is there a twist? I don't. I don't know. But this is what I will say. I will say this. I. I'm so sad for M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah, I feel bad for him. I yeah. liked a lot of his movies. Like, I, I, fuck you. I like Signs. Signs is awesome. I like Unbreakable. My favorite Shyamalan film. Yeah, is okay, but isn't that a sign of how long it's been since he's had a good movie? Is I it the know, last time he I had know. a good movie? Then, Mel well, Gibson was an actor. I know. Oh, that's, uh, oh fuck. Uh, oh. Well, it's like there's there's also you know the the Sixth Sense, which <laughs> which everyone likes. You know, <laughs> I love Lady in the Water. I think it's an amazing film. Devil, which he produced, but and he, I think he might have written it, but he didn't direct it. That was fantastic. Yes, Devil was Devil good. Devil was good. I remember Devil that. Devil was good. Yeah. Like, that was one of the better, like, again, simple, low-budget horror movies right. that are really surprisingly good. A, a lot of people good. have mm-hmm. not tried Devil because it's just... I, I rented it. They think it's just a bunch of people in the elevator. Yeah. And it is, and, and it it's is, amazing. But it's right. interesting. 
Yeah, I read it, or I read it. I watched it uh, when I had the flu and you were out of town and I was like dying and I would make myself run to the red box every day down the street to get something. And I was like, had no hope for it. I was in the worst mood possible and it totally made me feel better. I was like... It's a morality uh, you know, tale, Devil which was, is really good. Yeah, mm-hmm. Devil was that movie that someone was like, what do you mean you haven't watched it? And I saw it maybe a year after it finally yeah. came out. yeah. Kicking myself that I wasn't on on yeah. the bandwagon. Yeah, it's yeah, one of those movies good. that people discover. That's and that's totally. what again and like we were talking about Insidious. I don't own it on DVD. Devil, I do own on DVD. Okay. Just to give you an idea, like yeah. it's pretty yeah. good. I think I, we we went and bought it because we wanted to support it. Yeah, so. like it was it was really good. So poor M Night Shyamalan. Yeah, and you know some of the reviews are brutal, and they're like, "Oh, his once promising career, another Ugh, mark that against." Sucks. He's gonna kill himself, dude. We both said oh, that last my night. Oh my god! Don't say that. No, like last night, like we were, we, he was reading those reviews on fucking uh, Rotten Tomatoes, and that's what you said. He said his once promising career, da 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 da, and we both sat there, and at the same time, well, we both were like. He's gonna kill himself. Oh man! Like, both of us, like, and I was like, we, we oh, don't no. literally think that, but um, I don't hope for that. But no, 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 definitely but, not. I, I, I want to see his triumphant return. Like, I want to see him rise, like that's a phoenix what we're really from the ashes. For. You know, he has we're really been prolific. For. He has had a movie out every three years. Yeah, yeah. You know, most directors yeah. aren't that prolific. Yeah. Um, but like, what what's happened? I mean, like, fucking a lot I don't of films well, are pretty the, good. We're, we're kind of not being fair because we haven't actually seen the movie. I don't know. We're basing this all off the 12% review. It's got review. Will Smith and Jaden Smith in it. Yeah, a lot of people are saying that are uh, you a f- nepotism was happening. I was oh. going to say, like, is it one of those things where it's like, hey, look, you need to make a movie and we have an idea? Pretty much. That's probably so what it was. how about this? Well, that's probably you, what it was. Yeah. No, I mean, like, exactly you, is that, could that be it where it's like, look, probably. my son is going to be a star and one way or the other we're going to make it I mean, plus Will Smith, you would so, think, uh, is bigger, no, a bigger player exactly than M. Night Shyamalan. No, that's I've read has happened is that the Will Smith came to M. Night and asked him to direct. Oh, movie. shit. So there is some... Okay. Yeah. If if one important person out there wants to give M. Night another chance, I hope it's because they heard this podcast. It was like... Yeah. Maybe two and two got put together. I know. I said, like, like, give you, him something good to do, because, yeah. yeah, that's... I don't think this well, is his mo- fault. Most of his yeah. movies I think Will he Smith's has fault. written himself, and, and the last two movies mm-hmm. uh, have been someone else's script. Right. But he hasn't done a good job on someone else's script. Right. No, no, no. Which is he odd. Did. It's usually the other way around, you know, for a lot of people. Well, yeah, he was a director for hire, basically, on this right. film. And right. I guess they are, just, they are, the reviews are saying that he did not do anything very special with it. Well, I don't think he had much to work with either, probably. Because that's the thing, man. So, sometimes you make art, sometimes like, you pay the fucking bills. Like I want, you know? yeah, well, like I was going to say, like, did they go back to this thing where it's like, right now? hey, we have this script, no one else will make it, but you have a name that's really hard to pronounce. <laughs> so how about you direct it? We put your name on it, yeah. right? And I'm using quotation marks when I use the word direct. Yeah, but I don't know. You know, oh, and, and I hope he at least starts like keeps writing or like producing or something. And like, I don't know. Like I said, I think he's got to get a lot of good stuff going on. I, I feel for the guy. Uh, I wanna, he gets, I he gets picked on a lot. He gets he picked on a lot. He does. But I feel bad for him. But maybe one day he'll have. A, a winning movie. <laughs> Maybe yeah. one day. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, what's up next? What else Moving we're... on. Oh, we're going to talk about... Uh... Oh, Screen Addict. No. Well, no. I just mentioned it, so... Well, go okay. <laughs> uh, you know, Screen Addict. I, I've left Screen Addict because we have a lot of work going on right now. we got yeah, a lot of projects. Yeah, movie review show and... on Cinefix Channel. Yeah, the movie... You're not doing it anymore? What? Yeah, I, I've decided that it was, it was a good... There's so much going on that I don't want to neglect my own show, you know, and... Uh, it was a hard decision. I had a lot of fun, and I learned a lot from working there, and it was a great experience. And uh, I don't know. It was it's just time to go, yeah. you know? Well, you guys have been super busy. Fuck. I mean, how many videos did you guys get out this week? Jesus. We, like, uh, man, I, I pulled, like, three, four all, uh, all-nighters in a row. Right. It was crazy. I'm completely burned out. He's completely like, like, dead We couldn't even week. do the podcast last week because you guys were yeah. constantly editing and putting stuff yeah. out right now. It was insane because so. we had to... Okay, so we had this opportunity pop up with the ADI uh, Harbinger Down Kickstarter thing, and that was very last minute, and uh, we had to get that out because it was time-sensitive. Uh, but then we realized as we were going along that... We could not put this out before we put out Starks Part 2, or it would have been destroyed. You mean part 1. Or Part 1, yeah. Or it would have been destroyed <laughs> by people on the internet. They would have, like, totally been bitches about it. And so we had to finish Starks Part 1, and then immediately had to finish, uh, you know, our 
practical effects interview. Yeah, so we had to rush two videos to get out at the same time. Yeah, it was crazy. Like, all, I felt bad for you. Like, all I could do was, like, make you, like, food and stuff. I was like, whoa, can I make you something? <laughs> can I get, can I make you a fruit plate? Like, I, I think I remember yeah. I asked you about a fruit plate one day. It's especially annoying when you get comments from people demanding that we're being lazy that we're not oh. working do, hard. Do you want to talk about the worst yeah. comment of the week? Oh, yeah. Here, let's, do let's, let's introduce our new feature. <laughs> new well, segment. You know, I don't want to say that we're going to yeah. keep doing this because I don't want people to start competing for the worst comment of the we're, week. New segment. Worst comment of the week. <laughs> stupidest <laughs> comment yep, of the week. No, we're going with it. This is the new segment. So yeah, this, but... The stupidest comment of the week comes from Chuck Jones. <laughs> hey, Chuck, you Starks, suck. <laughs> Starks video who says... No offense, but are you some kind of bitch or something? Not you take offense, like three taken. years to put this video up. <laughs> Have no idea why it takes so long. You must be dumb or something. And it's only one part. Okay, dummy, I'd like to see you put up the next video in the next couple of days or else. Okay, or, first question. Or else. First question. Or else what? <laughs> or else well, unsubscribe. Unsubscribe. Go let's not, for let's it. not please this guy too much because no, no, he might just number, be a troll who no, is. No, he's totally a troll. Number two. Who is purposely trying be, to say something stupid. You must be dumb or something. Can you ask me a question? Uh, answer me this question. Does he even have a profile pick up on YouTube? No. Okay, so you're not. too stupid <laughs> to even work out a profile pick on the computer, but obviously these guys are <laughs> dumb I okay. know. and just take forever. Some, some people came to defense and they said, she, she takes okay. her time for it. I don't see you going to the trouble of fixing up us up with a quality video. <laughs> and then he responds to that person. Oh, this is the best. Shut it, dumb shit. She's doing it on purpose. <laughs> She's giving us one episode at a time to scam us into watching another. It's a scam. I'm pulling the, the great scam of 2013 where I scam Chuck, you with quality right. content. Chuck, Chuck is, just, is either a 14-year-old girl or a 35-year-old anime fan. I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. It's pretty retarded, though. It's hilarious. It's... Uh, it's interesting. Well, it's Chuck, interesting. We're, we're working pretty hard here. Yeah, I, 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 but I guess we're dumb and we can't get it out on sorry time. Sorry, we're so. scamming you so Maybe hard. you should come over here and know, help us so much to get money it out. And yeah, I know. Scams. I know. You know what? Just Chuck, just remind your mom to call me. That's all. <laughs> so, That's all. so what's what's up next? We we had some Twitter questions. Is that up next? Just do uh, or no, Man of Steel. Man, oh, Man of Steel. Man of Steel. Steel. Okay, Man of Steel. It's coming out this Friday. I need to still get tickets. Okay, I did have a couple Twitter people asking for Man of Steel love. So all right. let's just kind of incorporate that. Kirk, I know you have some theories. I do. Let me hear them. Um, I really want this movie to do well. Okay. I really do. Let me let me say that right off the bat. Fair enough. I want them to make Superman interesting again. That's, yeah, because yeah. uh, you know you did say on your movie predictions episode pre-summer that yeah. you didn't think it was going to be good because he's the hardest character. But right, we have been hearing write. a lot of good things from people who've seen it. Well, but my spider sense is tingling. Okay, tell me. I I I have some theories, and I'm pretty sure one at least one of these theories is going to be right. Okay. Are, wait, are these theories on the story? Story and what they're doing. So in the this movie. is a potential theoretical spoiler. Well, it could be theoretically speaking. All right, I'm going to close my ears because I just want to <laughs> see the movie. All right, he's gonna close his ears. Earmuffs. We're waiting. <laughs> I honestly think um, Krypton doesn't blow up. Really? I think they're gonna keep Krypton around. I think this so... is just a big deal about the fact that Krypton's in a civil war. Okay. Okay. So why was he sent off in the pot? Because it, Kryptonians are genetically altered from birth uh -huh. to be what they're going to be in, when they grow up. And I think the big story here, this is my prediction. Okay. I think my big story here is that he Jor-El decides, no, screw you guys. My son will grow up to be whatever he wants to be. Okay. And maybe there's a, f a fraction, a faction, I should say, uh -huh. of Kryptonians who are like, no, we're going to grow up to be whatever we want. This genetic altering's wrong. Yeah. Meanwhile, there's the other side, who's led by Zod in the military. Yeah. They're like, no, you are what you are from birth. Yeah. And so that's why maybe that's there's a, a major giant Kryptonian civil war. That's really interesting. And that's why, yeah, and that's why I think Cal gets sent to. Uh, that's an interesting philosophical Earth. debate. I like that. Like I would like that a lot better if there was, his origin stories start with a philosophical debate. That'd be kind of cool because he's such a philosophical character. But then, where do you find Krypt? Like, right, Kryptonite. Kryptonite. Yeah, where do you find Kryptonite? And does he even have a weakness at this point? Right. There, you know, I saw a billboard the other day. Uh -huh. Living in Hollywood, there's a lot of. Um, oh, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. Like there's crazy billboards. They're for every billboard up in your bedroom. Every right now. movie, it's crazy. <laughs> and I saw this. How does Superman shave? Really? Gillette. And I was like, you know, I can tell you, it's not fucking Gillette. <laughs> like right now, like. <laughs> 
<laughs> like that shit's remember, not. Remember uh, Superman the movie number two? Was that the one where he had the strand of his hair holding up Hold like, it, fifty uh, pound dumbbells? Yes. No, that was a uh, that was the one with uh, Solar Man. I think that was like Ugh. four. Ugh. It was four. Really? And John Cryer all... was uh, Lex Luthor's like annoying nephew. So his, oh, really? his hair is the yeah. strength of razors. Apparently. Pretty much. Yeah. So I mean, he can. Yeah. So I, yeah, I, that is the question that I've always had because they do have shown with a beard, and then they show him. Does he? This is my theory: how right. he shaves. He gets a mirror. He does his laser eyes. Yeah, he does his and heat then, vision. And then yeah, and then just does a heat vision, and then just like does they, it through a mirror. Sh- they've shown that in the uh, comics before. I think oh, that's okay, a really fun okay, way. Okay, yeah. okay, good. Because like I was like, that's that's the only way I can think of that he would do it. I'm glad that they've done that. Then um, another theory: there is no Fortress of Solitude. I think that there's an old Kryptonian ship that lands on Earth thousands of years ago. Mm. And Kryptonians have probably visited Earth before. Okay. And this is how Jor-El knows if he wants his son to be safe, he needs to send him to Earth. Right. Because now they know what the son does for Kryptonian DNA. So, if they yeah. do... Okay, so if they do these things, right. which I'm not against because it's a movie, it's a separate no. continuity... I think the movies are allowed to have a little bit of leeway with their continuity because they're it's a different medium. So like totally. I'm open to new things. Look how look how great the Batman franchise right. was. Right. Absolutely. But it's like, do you think that's going to translate to a Justice League movie? Like any of this stuff? Because like they're making it so weird that like they're not gonna be. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like like how do they fit the rest? Because same, same with Batman. We don't know that yet. And no, but Batman was a fantastic example of it's a great isolated story. Would not work in Justice League. Like, will not work with Justice League, like, in my opinion. Oh, I'm sorry. speaking of which, uh, yeah. Joss Whedon said something that people got in an uproar about. Ooh. He said that uh, he Batman is really a Marvel character in the DC universe. He is! He is. And I, th- I was like, and people got upset about it. I was like, well, no, that's absolutely that's true. That's absolutely <laughs> true. Because he's interesting. <laughs> well, no, because he's a normal person who rises flawed. up and becomes yeah. something. Yeah. Better. Well, right. And the rest of the DC universe is? Is gods and right. being compared to, like, right. the pantheon and, being gods. And the and thing like, is, uh. in, in Marvel, you have gods, like, you have Thor, right. and he's flawed. Like, totally. even their gods are flawed. You know, he's he's vain, and he's, you know, like, How fun was it reading and, those stories about young Thor, and he's this and arrogant, yeah, brash idiot. Yeah, drinking wine, fucking yeah. hose, like, whatever. And, like, it was awesome, you know? Like, like, even even Marvel's gods were like, well, I guess we have to be better now, huh? Yeah. And, and you, I mean, you even have, like, I don't know, like, weird high evolutionary people who still have weird things going on. Where right. it's like, And they're, like, the highest you can be is, like, a kind of an omnipotent sort of being. And, like, it's... And it, it, Galactus. I mean, I mean, you got fucking Galactus. The like, Watcher. He's bald. That's a huge <laughs> flaw. Everyone like knows. how much power he has. Everyone knows that nobody likes bald men. It's... it's uh, true. Larry David has told us all about how they're discriminated <laughs> against. Uh, <laughs> but... Yeah, but like, yeah, no, I I fully agree with Joss Whedon, and yes, yeah, yeah. he is he is a Marvel character in the DC universe. Yeah, and he's their most popular fucking. character. But I was character. saying that because you were saying that Superman, Wonder Woman, the Justice League, yeah, doesn't necessarily work together. Well, in in movie you know, in a movie sense, yeah, yeah, and I guess we'll find out if we can compare Superman. Yeah, to and, Batman. And here's the thing: I know that DC is when it comes so out. yeah, but I know DC really wants to compete with Marvel. They really want to compete with Marvel. They really want to beat Marvel at the Marvel movie game. But <sighs> I, I would be so impressed with DC if they do something classy yeah. and not mention any Justice League in this. Right. Not mention any of the other superheroes. Yeah. Like, just folk, Like it is hard enough to make Superman relatable as it and, is. And that's the thing. They did just that. Just focus on him. They did. No, they kind of did that in the Marvel movies. I don't think they're going to promise a Justice League movie at the end of no. this or anything. God, no. I, I hope, hope they don't. But no. Um, no, I don't think that's. But that's the thing that Marvel did so well is like they they would have the movie, mm-hmm. and at the very 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 end at the end of the credits you'd have a little something you know right, like right. until they they got a little bit more and then they started implementing within the movie like in Iron Man two they started implementing all the Avengers stuff and setting up Avengers two when they had already you know things right. Marvel was really smart with their and, with their shit with their groundwork. Let me stress like my theoretical spoilers like is in the hopes that this movie is awesome. Yeah. Like, I, you know, I, I it, hope it's awesome. I don't know if it's going to be. Right. We'll see. And I would, because I would really love to live to see the day like there, when I see someone who's not Lex Luthor or right. Zod as a bad guy in these films. And there, there, are, but some of the things that I, I kind of have see troubles with, and I was talking about this on Leet Lounge when I did a little appearance on there with uh, the other last week, whatever. Uh, 
they're already doing, like, they're already making him, they're already building him up so much with this godliness thing mm -hmm. in the trade. Like, they're already marketing it, like, oh, he's so the Messiah, and he's, oh, right. you know, and it's like, uh, like, I, they're building it up so much. And... That's why my spider sense is tingling. Like, I mean, yeah. I'm really But I'd be interested that... if they did do what you were saying, like, right. to change it up. Like, I think that would be a smart move on their part, because it is a story that we all know. Because how cool would it be if come two or three movies from now, mm -hmm. you're watching Kal-El, Clark Kent, Superman, splitting his duties between being Superman and also doing his job yeah, as a Kryptonian. Yeah, I mean, and it would be a really then, cool alternative, then, alternative continuity. Right, and then maybe he's grown up and he's a full adult when he watches Krypton blow up. Well, that would really screw somebody up. Yeah. That, that would be a flaw that Superman might be able to... That could be really cool. Be I relatable lot, with. I see a lot of really cool implications yeah. with that idea, and I hope that you're right. I hope so. I don't know. So, so that's well, fine. You know, I want that movie to be good. I really I do. We'll we'll report back. We'll <sighs> know I've, next weekend. I've got midnight tickets. I'll let you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you got any extras, oh, we're, we're gonna go see it. Well, yeah, we're gonna go see it. But if he has extra tickets, I don't know. We got to figure out which no, hour we'll we're gonna go see out. it. Well. So, let's go on to some Twitter questions, Twitter. Facebook questions. That was technically my Twitter question. So, um, <laughs> my Twitter isn't as awesome as yours. Uh, but I have. You know whose Twitter is awesome. Robots. Robots. cpg 19s <laughs> underscore robot. Go follow that. Uh, run and tell that, homeboy. Just saying. Uh, Kathy Rodriguez Monroe asks on Facebook, hmm. who does your hair? <laughs> and I want to answer that question, so I'm going to answer it. I do my hair, Kathy. I do it. It's <laughs> DIY. I cut off chunks of it every now and then when it's getting too long. I have T-Bone help me shave the sides. I have my friends come over to help me dye it pink. It's crazy. T-Bone's had to even help me bleach my roots. It was awful. Everyone hated it. Uh, it's taken a lot of time to get it to where it is. You know, it's it's a whole, like, mm -hmm. you, you can't wash it every day. You have to wash it every, like, once a week. You know, you got to let the build up and you got to put, you know, I have certain... Just shitty hairspray, dry dying shampoo. Hair, you can't put way too much chemicals in no, it. No, you can't. Yeah. You can't put any hot water on it either. You have to when you when I do wash it, I wash it in cold water to keep the pink in. Oh, that sucks. It sucks really bad. So, Kathy, I do it myself. It's a labor of love. It is a labor of love. So there you go. Uh, what else we got? This is another uh, ridiculous question, but I'm going to say it anyways. Go for it. JP Christensen says. Why do my kittens wake up early and run around my room every day? And you know, honestly, I don't because know. They I think love I'm. You. I think I'm gonna need you to bring them over here and let me do some experiments with them. Let me do some tests. Uh, let them run all over my face in the middle of the morning, uh, and then I can get back to you. Kittens are awesome. Love and kittens. I'm jealous that you have some. So uh, yeah, we got another. We got one for you, Kirk. What? Uh, Bad words media says who who hmm. you got for the new doctor who i <laughs> idris elba right ask kirk he will know that this will please odin so <laughs> that <laughs> that was the question uh, there are a lot of doctor who uh for those that don't know because i kind of went off on my finale wrap up last two weeks ago mm -hmm. um matt smith there's been some big news matt smith announced that he is leaving the show so he's been here for like four seasons, and uh, just throw the pen at him. It's okay. We're recording. Oh, I missed it. Ah, there we go. Can I get that laptop? <laughs> go uh, ahead. Sorry. Uh, it's organic. I don't care. It's fine. But uh, Matt Smith is leaving the show, so they're doing the... They've already wrapped up the 50th anniversary with him and David Tennant, and then there's going to be the Christmas special, and then at the end of the Christmas special, Matt Smith is going to regen and will be introduced to a new Doctor Who. Yeah. So someone out there walking around right now, in Stephen Moffat's words, said they, they're just going about their business every day, and they uh -huh. don't even realize that they're about to be the new Doctor. Yeah. And it's kind of a big deal, because they are going to keep uh, Clara on. Mm -hmm. She's going to stay as companion. So so new Doctor, same companion. Same companion. Has new that ever doctor. happened before? Yes, with Rose Tyler and uh, Eccleston. And also, it's, it's kind of a, a long history, because it makes the transition a little bit easier for the Doctor, as well as the viewers. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I know it sounds kind of weird, but it's the truth. If you just switch up the entire cast right away, it, it's hard. You need that yeah. kind of like right, sense that of bridge. familiar. Yeah. So Claire's going to stay on. Um, we don't know who the new doctor is yet. Moffat's still going to stay on as a showrunner. Okay. And that's going to take off. 
Okay. So let the speculation begin. Personally. Mm, personally. Peter Dinklage. <laughs> Let's just do that right now. Yeah. He's hot right now, man. Just make him make him the new doctor. He's hot right now. Uh, you know, I'd be down to see a black Doctor Who. Let's get some Idris Elba. Is that am I saying it right? Yes, Idris Elba. That'd be awesome. Uh, you know, he he's he's pretty awesome. I'm gonna. He'd be say. great for it. He I really would. Of, I kind of have a crush on him a little bit. And uh, and this is not a joke. I really do. Th- I was looking at uh, photos the other day. I was like Victorian styled cosplay. Doctor Who. I got pretty specific. Oh, yeah. But one picture showed up and it was Patrick Stewart in his uh, one man Christmas carol play that uh-huh. he does every couple of years. Uh-huh. So it was him in like full on Victorian awesomeness and a top hat. Uh-huh. Patrick Stewart would make an awesome doctor. Just saying. That would be... Matt Smith died. Here it is. Matt Smith is dying. He regens. The bad guys think they've won. And all of a sudden... The doctor stands up, he turns around, and it's fucking Patrick Stewart, and yeah. everyone realizes that the universe is safe, and the bad guys are fucking fucked. <laughs> it, it would just, that's my, my two cents. Yeah, yeah. But we'll get somebody that no one knows. I know. Well, that's that's what's so great about, like, British stuff. It's like, yeah, like you just, a, you, they, they, they d- take chances on people, and, yeah. you, and you have, I, you know what I love about BBC stuff the most? Hmm. It's that not everybody on BBC channels are 20-somethings that are all look the same. No. Like, Hollywood is so bad about that. Like, they all look the same. And, like, I just love that BBC has, like, middle-aged people. People with weird faces. I like, love it. Whatever. Like, normal people? Like, just people. People with bad haircuts. I, you know, it's great. <laughs> like, I never want to be an actor, but, like, if I move to England, maybe I have a shot. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Not I know. Mug, but... Um, let's see here. I have a couple of questions here about Clone. Oh, you were covering Clone. I don't know. Okay. Clone, I, I love the art of it. I don't know where, I still don't know where it's going. I'm still, I keep, re- it's one of those things where I keep reading it and it's mm-hmm. like, it's not bad, but I'm not wowed by it either. Right. You know, because it's like all the characters. I would read it just for the art alone. Well, yeah, I mean, 100%. Now, so you guys are showing me the, the, the issues and yeah, the art's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, Clone, it's interesting. Uh, Some people were asking you about uh, the Xbox One and PlayStation Four over and over again. Okay, I don't know fuck about any of that shit. Like, I'll, I'll report back <laughs> to you guys. I don't even know what that is. I don't yeah. even know what that is. I'll like, report back to you guys. But we are going to E3 next week. So. Yes, even though I don't know anything about anything, I guess we're I'll get some learning on, and I'm going to go to E3. I don't we know We got which free day. passes <laughs> through Maker, so we're just yeah. going to go for fun. And yeah, uh, thanks, guys. I mean, they're just gonna take pictures of everything, send them to me. Like Kirk, what is that? I'm like, that's an Xbox. <laughs> I know. You like, play oh. games on it. Like, oh, rad. No, when, oh. You know what I'm more interested in is not the new video games there, but they had uh, they have a um, video game museum there that's really cool. Shut up. And I just want to go there and play Primal Rage because that game's All awesome. All <laughs> day. Mm-hmm. Your little Velociraptor. Yeah. You're rad. Mm-hmm. Ah, I wish yeah. they'd bring that game back. What was yeah. the other one? Time Killers, which was a super was right. It the, no, yeah, that man. one was it was it was a game that they were trying to model after Primal Rage and Mortal Kombat. I'm, I can't someone please I hope you remember what it is. And it had super bloody decapitation, limb cut off stuff. Those, are, those were all the uh, the the stop motion yeah. or claymation, yeah. whatever yeah. it was. Yeah. Motion capture. I don't know. Like it was the guy it was with a like chainsaw pictures. who would do like this spitting like yeah. three sixty they, they don't make games like that yeah. anymore. They it's don't. unfortunate. No. Anyway, this is a comic book show, guys. <laughs> whatever. We're talk about God, video games. Sorry. Yeah. Well I got I got a good question here. Uh, okay. I'm gonna put it to you guys as well. It's probably more for me, but I think everyone should answer this. Jamie Lannister, Jon Snow, Cal Drogo. You have to fuck one, marry one, kill one, go. This is from Jesse Young. Oh. I guess I'll start. Please? <laughs> I'll, let, I'll let you guys uh, uh, come up with your... Wait, it's one. Cal Drogo, Jon Snow, and who? Jamie Lannister. Oh. So you have to, you have to fuck one, marry one, kill one. Um, <laughs> okay, I would say I would have to fuck Cal Drogo. Because, I mean, honestly, like, look at that. Uh, second of off, uh, I would I would kill Jon Snow. I feel I, you know he's he he's a little too whiny sometimes for me. Uh, and I guess I would I would have to marry Jamie Lannister, you know. Ugh. But I would marry Jamie Lannister like post some things that you know. Okay. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll go next. Uh, <laughs> let's see, I definitely wouldn't want to marry Cal Drogo because the conversation wouldn't be very good. Yeah. No. And that's really the rest of the stuff is just temporary, right? Yeah. 
Wait, wait, what's the third thing I have to do? Well, fuck one, marry one, kill one. Oh, I have to kill one? Yeah. Um, I guess I'll kill Cal Drogo. Oh, that's pretty bald. I mean, that, that would be pretty amazing, luck. though, if you, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then uh, I'll, Jon Snow, ugh. You'll marry John. No, you're gonna, no, no, you're no. gonna marry John. Oh no, no, no! I'll just get it over with real quick. The the thing that nobody wants to do. Oh okay, <laughs> okay. And then you'll marry Jamie too. We uh, had two marriages with Jamie. Maybe. He's yeah. There yeah. we go. Man, you know fine. what? I, I I have to say just. Uh, oh man. <laughs> this is hard. I know. I know. Okay, so do we? You know what? Kill Jamie. You know, I'm gonna take it back. No. I don't, don't uh. want to. I don't want to marry Jamie Lannister because he's gonna have trouble carrying the groceries up. <laughs> so, so I'll marry Jon Snow in person. Okay. I, was gonna say, I like, knew you were gonna marry Jon. I'm gonna. I'm gonna care. Yeah, I'm gonna kill Jamie. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, that Drago. Wow. And Good. then yeah. I just I don't know. I guess maybe Jon Snow is just a, a dreamy. I mean, I could. You're gonna I, let Cal you know, Drogo do that to you. That's gonna hurt. <laughs> well, once, just once, just, <laughs> just so that we can get the game over with. Hey, man. I mean, yeah, then, that that dick will change you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it'll change you maybe, in a positive way, maybe but maybe just uh, uh, just so that I can get in so, with the Starks and just be a part of that. Like that's the only way I can go. I mean, <laughs> oh, you're assuming what family you're gonna marry into? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not like you do it for love, anyways, guys. Whatever. <laughs> I know, I know. It's just uh, a game. What do you think about... Uh, Cho Rivera says, what do you think about a Power Man movie with The Rock as Luke Cage? I'd totally watch that. I'd watch it. I'd I know he down. was hinting at it for a while. You know? On his Twitter. Yeah. That would be cool. It'd be good casting. I'd be okay with that. Again... Are we going to get an Iron Fist in there too, though? Ah, uh, see, dude... Oh, my God. We just... We team him up with Mark Wahlberg again. Mark Wahlberg is just a completely vapid... <laughs> Like spiritual yeah. Iron Fist. That would be to, that would be pretty uh, funny. Although I don't know if yeah. he can kick as high enough as he should Probably for Iron not. Fist. Probably I don't know not. if Wahlberg can kick. He's got the top, upper half. I don't know if he's got the right the lower half. But yeah, I'd be. I like the rock. I personally, I uh, oh now, uh, crap. Who's what's his name? The Hey Girl dude. I know every girl can remember him. I can. Oh 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 oh. Uh, uh, fucking my sister is like in love with that guy. Um, come on, what's what's d- the, uh, drive? drive. What's his name? Notebook. Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling, yeah. T Bone remembered. <laughs> Ryan Gosling would be an awesome Iron Fist. Yeah, I could That's see that. He's right yeah, because he's lanky and he's yeah. tall and he's got that. I could see that. That would be really cool. Yeah. that would be really cool. I'll throw that one out. Uh, let's see what else. What else we got on here? Anything exciting? Let me see. You get like Twitter, man. You guys are you guys on Twitter are not getting the questions. Like Facebook is always beating you out like every single time. <laughs> uh, it's pretty crazy. Um, let me see here. What was uh, a Marco wanted a birthday shout out? So happy birthday, Marco! Marco, you rule. You rule. At least you're not that Chuck guy. I know, Dick. <laughs> um, I couldn't let it go. I'm sorry. I know. Well, it's that's you're you're. How? Where are we on this thing? We should be wrapping it up right about now. Okay. okay. Well, let's just yeah, wrap it just up. That. Well, you can't do that. That's disappointing. One oh, more question. Oh, jeez. Okay. How about well, okay. one more question and call to action. One here. more question. This yeah. is for you, T-Bone. Uh, Adrian DeVoe asks, why is robot so sexy? <gasps> well, I don't know because I'm not robot. Well, what I'm would you T-Bone speculate? I'm robot is robot. I know, I know. But what would you speculate? Like, why Why would you think robot is so sexy? What do you think that he attracts? Is people? robot sexy? Yeah. yeah. According to one person. No, uh, no, a lot the of entire people. internet. Okay, Kirk, why do you think robots are so sexy? Are you kidding? Look at those fucking buttons. <laughs> All those goddamn <laughs> buttons you can push and flip around and toggle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. That's right. Yeah, yeah. He's got a lot of modes oh. in the bedroom. I know, and he's got those pinchers, too. Mm-hmm. He's Ooh. got the pinchers. Those you don't know what those can do. Mm-hmm. I know. Pinchers. And, and antennas are always interesting, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Besides, he's got the best taste in 90s comics, so, duh. He, he does, he does. Well, it's it's brains and beauty. I think it's a you combination. Know. I think that's why he's so sexy. And that 14-year-old <laughs> intellect. <laughs> <laughs> that's, it really does it really a does number it on talk me. to the ladies. Yeah. yeah. I know he talks to me, just, it's crazy. It's like to my soul, you know. Um, so I guess that about wraps it up today, guys. Oh, Good. speaking of 12-year-olds, Uh oh. I want to say something about the hockey team. Okay. The Beaver Stuffers the Beaver hockey stu- team. Back to the Beaver. My so favorite hockey we, team next to the we Kings. Finally got, <laughs> we finally got our jerseys, and they are just as bad as we had hoped. Oh, wait, <laughs> so not as bad as everyone thought they were going to be, as bad as, like, this was exactly what we were envisioning. Yeah, I should have I should have brought them up there in the car. Yeah. I know. You know I haven't we'll even seen the picture. No, I, you know... <laughs> 
Um, so, no, no, but so it's funny. So I was like, oh, my girlfriend wants me to quit the team, you guys, because of this logo. <laughs> what did they say? She's, and she's like, yeah, that's what all of our girlfriends are saying. <laughs> <laughs> and one of them was like, oh, my mom is like ashamed. And, oh, my God. And we're all like, how did this happen? Like, that's, that's the problem. And, and that's the, 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 problem. The, guy, the one guy that ordered the jersey is like, this wasn't my idea. I just ordered them, okay? Uh, no, it was uh, Kian? You, are you talking no, about? No, Kian wasn't there yesterday. Oh. You guys have inadvertently become like the new Hanson brothers. <laughs> yeah. Like, just like, why? Yeah, yeah. So no one on the team is is admitting responsibility, although we know who who designed it. Yeah, and it well, up. we know. But I guess none of us thought it was actually going to happen. So, <laughs> well, that's what happens well, this, when you know good yeah, men do nothing. He, he said, that's, uh, that's "Really, I was like, this is what happens when you dream big." Eric said when he ordered the jersey, to the person that was like doing the design was like, "Are you serious? Are you guys twelve years old?" <laughs> That is, like I'm so sad about that. Shit. Oh, oh, and then I found out that some of the guys, uh, their the previous team that they were on that I wasn't a part of was called the Murder. The Murder. Yeah. Well, like a murder of crows. Which I was like, that's a much better name. Why don't we just be the Murder? Yeah, I mean, I'm okay with that. Like, because you can have it's a also black, stupid, but you know, in red, yeah. like Murder of Crows yeah. or something. But Beaver Stuffers is the dumbest thing that I have ever heard in my life. And I am embarrassed that you're on that team. And I don't well, think I'll ever just go... Every other team, when anyone tries to come up with a clever name, it never happens. And we just end up being like, oh, you're the Red Sox. Something uh, just standard happens. I, I think that... I am so excited to go to your next game. <laughs> you have no idea. Yeah. <sighs> it's Bring no. a sign for the Beaver Stuffers. I know. I, will. I know. You should make it as awful as possible. Just everyone... You, should get, you guys should just start getting trolls. Like, I wish you guys had a site that people could troll. <laughs> yeah, some, some like cheerleaders will come and cheer against us. Because yeah. it's sexist. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> no, oh, one of the guys on the team was like, no, no, tell your girlfriend it's progressive. <laughs> <laughs> it's progressive. It's progressive. That's interesting. That's an interesting way of putting it. Yeah. Well, all right. All right. I guess that's it for today. Well, uh, let's see. What else? Call to action. Call to actions. So what do, what do I do with that? I say, please listen to our shit and subscribe to stuff and be cool and... Yeah, everything you're already doing. If you got this far in the podcast, you're doing it. <laughs> I might even just leave this in right now, so you might as well just, like, just, okay, so. Just, yeah, be sure to, uh, you know, like us on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and fucking follow our podcast. Which, and... which are our Twitter handles? Because I'm in love with Twitter right now. Okay, yeah, Kirk is Kirk is coming into his own on Twitter. I really am. I'm really excited. Uh, I am cbgirl19. Uh, robot is CBG19's underscore robot, and you, Kirk. I am at Kirk Likes Stuff. Yes, yes. I couldn't believe that was not taken. That is really awesome. Yeah, that's really awesome. I like stuff. Yeah, and he does like stuff, and you should follow him on Twitter. So just saying. Twitter, the Instagram. I'm like, I don't know. I'm kind of. No, I liked that you you did your thing. What did you post on Instagram the other day? You posted a picture. Oh, the uh, from the wake where the chick had the flak jacket. Oh, with the flak jacket. Yeah, um, with the hat on. It's like there were twelve or thirteen likes on that thing. We're just like. I didn't even catch that. I so caught I was pretty it. stoked about I caught that. It. I was like, I know. I like, I like having too. the ninja eye when it comes to comics once yeah, in a while. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Okay. So. All right. All right. We'll, we'll see oh. you next time. Next time I'll be podcast number six. Plopcast. Plopcast. Number six. <laughs> <laughs> Over and out. Bye, guys. Surf's up.